Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Masood Olia, and I'm a, a faculty in the School of Engineering at Ventford University. And I'm back this time with an example of friction. In fact, I want to show you a video that I made just a few minutes ago uh, at home uh, on how easy it is to actually calculate the coefficient of a static friction with very simple experiment that you can do. Uh, between two bodies. So why don't I first show you, so this is uh, actually, this is uh, one body here, and this is the second body made of different materials. So how could we find the coefficient of static friction experimentally? And then I will prove it to you how simple it is to calculate the coefficient of static friction. Of course, by experiment, then I prove it to you. So let's watch this short video here with together. So, I'll turn it on. There we go. Uh, so let's say I would like to know the uh, coefficient of static friction between this uh, iPad cover and any anything else. I just use this pad here, you know, sticky pad. So what? It, it's a very simple experiment that you could do. Uh, so you put this two two surface one on top of the other, and then you raise this. As soon as the motion is initiated, by the way, notice that um, it takes a the angle becomes large, and there must be a lot of friction. The larger the angle, the more friction between these two bodies. Of course, today is a very humid day here in Boston, uh, so that humidity adds to the uh, friction. So looks like there's a lot of friction. Here we go. So you see, so as soon as the um, the motion is initiated, you hold on to that object, and then you measure the angle. Uh, let me continue. Sorry. So, if you measure this angle, right? This angle that is formed. I will show you uh, in a minute that the tangent of this angle is the coefficient of static friction. So it's very simple again. You put two bodies in contact, whatever two bodies are apart. So for example, if I use a different, say this uh, calculator cover, which is made of plastic and ceramic. Okay. A lot of so, so here we go. So notice that guys, this with the uh, calculator cover, there was more friction because the angle was larger. So it took much higher, uh, steeper uh, slope for the uh, motion to initiate. So uh, let me uh, close this guy. Uh, there we go. So let's get to our calculations. So look guys, if I draw a free body diagram of this, let me just use let me actually start with the weight of this object, right? Weight is what? Mg. Then uh, the forces that you guys know from physics are what? The normal force, which is 90 degrees to the uh, surface, and then the friction force. So the impending motion is about to be to the to down, down uh, the, uh, the ramp. And so the friction is opposing that motion. Now, if we uh, pick this to be our x-axis and this to be our y-axis, right? You have seen this many times probably in physics, nothing uh, you know, new. So this angle obviously is theta, which is the same as this angle, right? So let's go and balance forces in the x and y direction, assuming that the system just before the motion starts um, is in equilibrium. So sum of the forces in y equals zero. So remember, y is 90 degrees to the surface as shown here. So we have n, and then we have the component of this guy along the y-axis, which it happens to be w cosine theta. So that would be minus w cosine theta because it's pointing down. So N becomes W cosine theta. So let's hold on to this. Uh, then balance forces in the X direction, 
and that should give us the friction. So this is the uh, x direction parallel to the uh, uh, surface. So we have friction, which is going in the positive direction according to my axis. And then what about this component of the weight, which is the same as this, by the way? That would be clearly the uh, W sine theta then, right? And that's going down, so it would be in the negative direction. So friction force becomes W sine theta. Now you guys know that coefficient of friction, uh, or I should say the friction force, maximum static friction force, let's call it F max, is equal to mu s times n. So if you want to find the coefficient of a static friction, that would be what? Friction force or maximum friction force divided by n. So let's go ahead and divide this. So if I take F, which is W sine theta, friction force, right? And then I just determine that N is what? W cosine theta. Look, W and W cancel. This becomes tangent theta. And that's exactly what I said in the video. So coefficient of a static friction is tangent of the angle. So depending on the angle, so if the angle is, say, say the angle is 45, uh, which is you know, relatively large angle, uh, the coefficient of friction, the static friction becomes tangent of 45, which we know is one, uh, one. So you could have coefficients of friction that are larger than one, like if the angle, like in the example that I showed you in the video, that angle looked like more than 45 degrees, or even with the, uh, the calculator cover, it was more like, like 60, 70 degrees. So coefficient of static friction could be larger than one, could be smaller than one. If the theta is below 45, it's gonna be smaller than one. If it's larger than 45, right? The angle is larger than 45, mu s is larger than one. If theta is less than 45 degrees, mu s is less than one. So coefficient of static friction, you do have a table. It's experimentally calculated and, uh, you know, tabulated. You can go to the table and figure out the coefficient of friction between two surfaces. Of course, for coefficient of kinetic friction, you have to do more experiments with motion. Kinetic friction is when the motion happens. Static friction is when the motion is about to happen. Uh, as always, guys, I appreciate if you like the video, if you actually like the video, and uh, subscribe to my channel. And I really appreciate that. And I'll come up with new videos uh, every week or every other week, depending on how much time I have. Again, thank you very much. And I'll see you soon.